Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Diane, uh, may I have a roll call? Uh, Karen? Here. Carolyn? Here. Dennis? This means that Diane? Here. Candy? Here. Linda? Here. Tim? Here. Oh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, we have a motion to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. I make the motion. Second. Oh, whichever you feel like. Okay. Whatever makes you happy here. Okay. Just so we can shut up. All right. Do we have someone down? Yeah. Is there any room for All right. So the motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of tomorrow, fourteenth. Are there any corrections uh, to the minutes as written? Yeah. Does anyone like to uh, get a vote on that, please? Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Diane. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, I think we have a request for public comment tonight. Um, did you, uh, thank you very much. Okay, we do have a few requests to participate in uh, public comment. Um, so, Mr. Steve, is it Gordon? Nope. Steve Jones. Yeah. Why don't you stand up over here just so that the uh, request recording can catch you too? You bet. Okay. Sounds good. Good evening, folks. My name is Steve Dowdy. I live at 6954 West Monroe Court. I've lived here for about 45 years, and tonight I am here to learn and listen about what you do, why you do it, and also offer my services in any way. Uh, my background is facility management uh, for over 40 years. My last to do was at Evanston Hospital, Limburg Hospital, Island Park, North Shore Hospital, so I'll be willing to you know, have a discussion with any of you in regards to facility management or budgeting, just about anything there I, I kind of have experience with. Uh, I'd also like to, to thank all of you uh, for your services to our community. Uh, this is about the third time I've been to one of these meetings. I'd like to get a little bit more involved. Uh, I've heard rumors about a few things that I'd like to have a better understanding of, and, and, and hopefully you can help me understand where you're going and why you're going in that direction. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and finding out who you are and what your strategies are, uh, and maybe I can share a few of mine with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Our next uh, requester is is it Tisha? Tisha. Yes. Ashcroft. Yes. 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 Hello, I'm Tisha Dowdy Ashcroft, and. Um, I'd like to speak about the possible purchase of home slash homes. I believe it's not uh, fiscally responsible. Uh, reason one, it takes uh, the homes off the property rolls, which estimated loss per home for taxes is six dollars $8,000 per year per home. And it will affect schools. My kids go to Culver, it will affect them. It will affect the library itself. It will affect the city and basically will cause other residents' taxes to go up. Uh, reason two, um, from what I understand, there's only a handful of times per year that there is a need for additional parking. The library runs spots from Culver, which never seem to be, be fully filled uh, in non busy times. And Culver will also lose money from that revenue, which affects the school's income slightly. And you have spots at the bank. And I don't believe there's any harm in walking a little bit to get a parking spot a few times a year for big events. Uh, please consider being financially responsible to tax bureaus of Niles. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Joe McCullough. Okay, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Parking, which I noticed in the journal here. I'm sure everybody read that. Um, First of all, when you have events, and they, they highlighted the uh, Makers event, how all the vendors and attendees, did they park in our parking lot in our prime spots right by the door? Because they were the first ones to come in here. Maybe they should have been the 
management there should have seen that they all park maybe by the fitness center or somewhere else, which would open up a lot of spots. Uh, second, second of all, when you had the uh, Comic Con, you had Svengali here. You had two events going at once. You had people come to see Svengali that didn't want to see this Comic Con, and, and you had the other group for the uh, comic books. Um, so, you know, some, sometimes thinking these things out might eliminate some of the problems with parking. Now, um, I've thought about it, and it came to mind to me a day or so ago, that there are, there's enough parking spaces to add another 35 spaces here. I'm going to pass this around. Uh, I don't know if we do that Oh, I can't do that? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Oh. I I'm just want to. We'll look look at it. I'll, I'll show you. That's fine. I'm suggesting that instead of eliminating property here, we eliminate the parkways over here. Okay, the the distance from the fence to the curb is 18 feet. That's the length you need for a car. If you make this a one-way street going eastbound, people can pull in and make these angular spots. Okay. You would have the same number of spots here, the 17 that you have here. Doing the same thing here, you pick up 11 spots. And in your corner here, you have a grassy area where you can pick up five spots. Okay? Without tearing down houses, without spending a lot of money. Now, you're also a TIF zone. So maybe, being the TIF zone, the village will pay for this in 100%. And another thing, being a TIF zone, why not have the village put a crosswalk like the bicycle path half a mile east of there between the fitness center and the, and the senior center and the library? So you don't need to cross. You're a TIF zone here. This, they, they have that money to spend for improvements. Any questions? I think you know, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank you so much. We listen to what uh, patrons or uh, other uh, residents have to say. Okay. But we don't usually comment on... Um, oh, okay, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, that's all right. Can, that's can right. I leave these for the trustees? You can leave them right here. Yeah, right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Sure. sure. He's passing them down to us, Carol. They're coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, that is the last request to have on the sheet here for public participation. So we will move on to the next agenda item, which is our treasurer's report. Thank you. Thank you. Tim, yeah. did you want to discuss that? All right, um, this is our uh, fifth month of the fiscal year, and we are 41.6% of the way through the budget. And um, again, I have to apologize because it is a very boring report, but I guess that's a two-edged sword, right? Boring and good on, uh, on finances. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to report other than what we did last month, because this is very similar. One thing I do want to note on page nine, uh, well, our revenues are per expectation, so, so we're right in line with that. But the passport activity, is really in line with our budget expectations, which is, is pretty good because uh, you know it was uh, right. It was basically a, a kind of a just a, just a, a, an estimate, a large estimate. You know, nobody could really predict exactly what our activity was. So it's I have to commend you guys on a, uh, a good, good guess on that part. Uh, salaries on page nine are within expectations on budget. Uh, page ten, library materials. Uh, we had talked about subscription day costs, uh, previous board meetings, uh, overall operating uh, expenditures are 35%, uh, that's well under. Uh, we had previously talked about our internet charges. Because of the E-rate rebate, we are actually at a negative to budget by 26%. So that's, uh, that's something. Mm -hmm. Page 11, uh, general and admin at 33%, it is running well under budget. And, uh, I have really nothing of note on 12. And page 13, we talked about workers' compensation, unemployment compensation, and other meetings, and everything else is on or close to budget. So, good job, again. Okay. 
Looks like we haven't spent much on substitutes so far this year either. It looks like that's pretty low in terms of expenditure so far. That's page what? Yeah, uh, that's page nine. Page nine. Well, I mean, I mean, it's good. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, over yeah. Christmas, then maybe a little bit more of the other grand holidays. Does anyone have any questions on the uh, treasurer's report? You know, I had a question about um, <clears throat> probably the income statement. I, I was trying, to, I went through it and I was wondering, do we have a hospitality line somewhere in there? I don't, I didn't see it. The what? Hospitality. hospitality. I don't believe we have a line item for hospitality. No, so do we, how do we um, identify those costs? It would depend what, uh, what if it was with um, hospitality, probably for all our patrons or any hospitality. Well, I mean, most hospitality costs would be associated with the program of some kind, so it would be included in the program risk okay. expense. Um, that would be by far the majority of it. Occasionally, we serve um, cookies or something when a group comes here for a meeting, so those mm -hmm. would be under the meeting. The, I think it's probably under the professional development line. So that for under our costs. programs, we have like giveaways, we have hospitality, we have costs for entertainment. Isn't that a yes. bit blurred? It shouldn't be certain items be pulled out. Well, that would be a budget discussion, in my opinion. Actually, it's an accounting. Well, we, we would discuss principle. that, how we allocate our funds. That no, how you report your spending. How we report, right. Mm -hmm. That would be a, because we're not, Okay, so it's not right. included in here. I just thought by now we yes. would have added it. Not a problem. So, but it's, a good, it's a good thought. It's a good thought. Well, I, was, it's, I brought I it up before, yeah, but no, I would you. say that for our budget discussion. Okay, so I did have one last um, comment. Last month, Trustee Spadoni spoke about the poison in the pen. Uh, while a colorful comment, it overlooks the specifics, which I stated. And um, the library, and what I, what I stated was the library administration inflates attendance figures, including non-library sponsored events at this library or well, off is this, is this a comment about it's the It's a comment when he report? made his. Well, I'm should, getting there. That should be done. I'm uh, getting there. As well, well as inflating <laughs> attendance to represent more than one event. Circulation figures are inflated and falsely reported as much higher. Carolyn, higher. This, this is the agenda item about the yes, treasurer's report. And I'm report. getting there. I'm getting there about well, expenses. Library policy, and that's exactly when he gave his comment. So I'm responding just when he gave his. Library policy automatically renews late items, counting them and all renewals as additional circular circulation items. Just want to clarify about his poison in the pen. The poison is not in the pen, but the poison is in the numerous printed documents our administration provides this board, which contain inflated figures and omitted figures. These practices represent mismanagement. Second to the administration's inaccurate inflated documents was their attempt to mask these distinct flaws in their practices and personal issues to the public. The entire library board should be willing to correct these issues rather than dismiss them. And but look, Carolyn, if you have, me, Carolyn, and if I you have, have any responding. specific points that you want to bring up rather than broad criticism. No, it's not standard. criticism. I want to make sure the poison of the pen is clarified because this wasn't a personal attack but specific issues with the way our administration provides us documentation. Okay, I'll respond. I think the poison is not in the pen. I think it is in the heart of the person writing it. Well, you need to listen to the details. You tend to overlook it. And then you had our public believe these were personal attacks. It had nothing to do with personality. I'm it's sorry, totally I thought you about asked me your to position. clarify. I clarified. Really? Okay, hey, Carolyn, part of that was not even pertaining to what you said as much, well, it was, because you went and publicized stuff that was in a closed session. No, I don't publicize anything in a closed session. Let's focus on what's on the Future nonsense is correct. Yeah. Let's finish with the treasurer's report. Fresh report. financial report. Right. Yes, thank you. Does anyone else have any? Questions about the treasurer's report? 
treasurer's report, the financial report. No. Matt, I'll move I'm on to the next item. I'll entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $233,261.14, payroll expenses of $486,626.24, or total monthly expense of $519,987.38. Do I have a motion to remove motion. the bills? Yeah. Second. 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 Okay. Second. All right. So Tim. Uh, Tim was the second. I'll second. Yes. All right. Is, are, are there any questions regarding the motion which is on the table? The bills themselves. And I'll call for a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right. The next item on the agenda is the director's report. Susan, will you please uh, give us the highlights of the director's report? We, of course, have the written report, mm -hmm. which is actually quite a few pages long which has uh, brought us up to date as to what's happened this past month. <coughs> yeah, um, if you look at page 41, it is the trustee calendar, and I just want to okay. highlight a couple of items for you, okay. um, because if you have things that if you want to attend them, you need to notify us quite soon. Um, the first one is on January 24th, that is the Chamber's Annual Leadership Luncheon, where the mayor speaks and various uh, officials from the village are there talking about mm -hmm. their plans for the future. Uh, do we know what day we get? Okay. I'll look at the calendar. Uh, uh, it's January 24th. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Yeah. 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 No can do. It's too bad it was not a few days later. It would be on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Yeah. Then I could have done it. Uh, but the second thing you might be more likely to be able to go to, because some of you have done it before, which is uh, February 28th. February 18th is the President's Day Legislative Breakfast. I will Spot. attend. I've, I've gone to that for. Where is that located? Uh, it's the in the the same place. Arboretum Club in Buffalo, Buffalo Grove. Yeah. So, so please let me know if you or let Diane know if you want to go and she will make sure that you. I have to find out if I'm going to be showing kids around, so I might not be able to. Okay. Yeah. But that's usually over by about a minute or so. But so. even earlier, I think. You know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, they're changing the format. Our legislators show up there most often times and we get to talk to them about issues facing libraries. So it's, uh, that was right. a good thing to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see, I did want to just let you know, because I'm sure you're interested, that we did get four trustee candidates for the election coming up in April. Um, so that was good. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's really all I have for you, unless you have some questions for me. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, what about, uh, let's see, communications? Thank you. Notes. All right, nothing, uh, I mean, obviously we have this all in our book here, and we can look through it. Uh, some very nice notes, questions, suggestions. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, someone said they wanted a stop sign in front of the library, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, where I wasn't sure. They yeah. explicit Actually, about that. I, I, when I drove in, I was thinking about that. Like, where would that be? Yeah. Were, yeah. were they talking the about the like, main entrance, maybe? I think it is the main entrance. Oh, you think maybe on the side? No, oh, right in front here. You guys the people crossing <coughs> from the uh, main entrance? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I tried crossing here. So is there yeah. not a stop sign to exit the library building? Well, the the but the as they approach the entrance of the library cars, oh, and oh, from oh, what oh, the they are in the front. parking lot. Yeah. 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 Uh, you so know how a jewel yeah, in the water, right. they have a stop sign near the entry of the building? Oh. Oh. So, oh, 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 you mean right yeah. by the door? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. people yeah. can yeah. walk across. Well, what do you think about one of those, Um, you know, the yellow line? And then that, I think that like, oh, that would make the sense. Right like in Park Ridge, But right, like your, what is it? Just you have to like stop for people. Something has, yeah. 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 Just like they get, like she well, said, just, like two or something. It's a lot, but it doesn't mean people do it. They do it as a, that might help. It, it, it makes sense. There's a good pump there. 
I know. You know, if you go over that too fast, you bottom out on the other side. Yeah, but seriously, it's a metal line. The stop sign doesn't hurt. It is striped as well. It is striped too? I believe, yeah, it's pretty much more alto. Oh. Like from the same time. Well, at least that gives me an idea of where they were even thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. So. That's exactly where I thought they would find it. Because, like, you yeah, say, because or you go by Jewel or any place, they have it right by the door. And yeah, because, you know, when we do go through preppers, there's even some flashing light, like mm -hmm. pedestrian crossing. What, but we've not been able to get that on the crossing on Oakton to get across yeah, the Yeah, not on the crossing, yeah, but. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, something to think about. Okay. Especially people there. Well, yeah, like I could say when I've got kids and go, it's sometimes, you know, trying to watch them, keep them from jetting in front of the car, it's not easy. So, two people all said the bathroom smell in the kids' area. I wish they would see it in the time. I said, what am I supposed to do two right. weeks later or whatever? Sure. Sure. Maybe it was the same day. Yeah. 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 All it takes is one stinky guy. So, yeah. someone, uh, someone was down there, I presume, going into the bathroom. One of our Dave, staff members. Yeah, Dave does have a schedule where his people go and check out the bathroom regularly. So. Okay. But, you know, they, I'm sure he would be happy to come anytime to take care of it. Always. Uh, Treasures. There, can I just say something? There has been stomach bug going around, so if someone comes and they have a little one who has an issue in a diaper, that just jacks up the regularity of a dirty diaper. Uh, or so it could just be cyclical with sickness going around. Yeah, okay. Normal. Yeah. yeah. All right. It is what it is. Um, I, I don't see any, we don't have any liaison reports from the Friends of the Library Legislative or Rails, do we? I think no. Rails, just a quick one. Oh, okay. um, uh, I, I, well, part of it was in my director's report mm -hmm. talking about That's the up. grant that we got, oh, for, that right. CCDS got from Rails. That is the first time that we have applied for it and gotten it, so that was wonderful. They gave a grant, a separate grant to Morton Grove Library for joining CCS to pay some of their costs for joining. And then uh, they're giving out the rest of the grant to build member libraries. So that is pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that they are working on is they have been working for some time now to develop standards for public libraries <coughs> in Illinois. And um, they have sent out a survey that I'm required to fill out or, or we will not get delivery service anymore. We're getting more mm -hmm. information about um, it, all kinds of uh, things that, that are sort of like uh, it does the director have her master's of library science is one of the questions. It's, it's many questions along those lines. What requirements we have for staff, what our staffing levels are, things like that. Okay. Oh. All right, thank you. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, I do. Uh, about the Friends of the Library. Carolyn, uh, it's my understanding or my recollection of the last meeting I had with the Friends, they had somewhere in the area of about $16,000 in their under. No, you'd have to ask. Um, his name. Um, Rich. Rich was, you know, how do you see his last name? Was 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 that? Yes, he's the um, treasurer, so he would know the numbers. So I was wondering if maybe you could contact um, their president to find out what their plans are, because I don't think they've had a meeting all year. Like, I don't remember the last time they had a meeting. I don't know if that's my role as um, attending the meeting. I mean, if this board has an issue, then Aren't you should liaison? address I thought you were the liaison. I know, but mm -hmm. I'm not there to critique them. I'm not asking I'm just there to participate. I'm asking to ask them when their plans are to spend that money for the library. Well, I think then the, the, this board as a whole should send them a letter, like you put in the newspaper, and well, voice you, your would opinion. You, would you draft and send that it letter to the, for us? Absolutely not. I, I have no intentions of, you know, questioning their spending. They do what they've done enough for this library. So I mean, since you have, would, you would are that be feel that way? responsible to find out when this third sixteen thousand dollars would come to the library. Um, fiscally responsible would have been not initially withholding the money, and but now that it's there for okay. us to be used. So the if, and again, if you have a question, I think this board as a whole should send a collective letter rather than you know request that of me. Okay. So maybe, maybe whoever drafted the letter for the newspaper could draft the letter right. for the board and send it as, as the whole board. Maybe we should start rethinking the role of the bees from now. You could rethink whatever you'd like. Great. So I, I think probably it would be a good idea for us to um, send a letter because they haven't uh, met for some time. So. Absolutely. And um, we don't know what, if anything, they're planning to do with that money. 
So let's move on to new business. Um, first is a review of the progress on our strategic plan. As you know, we passed our strategic plan some time ago, and I've asked Susan for us to provide us with an update. Uh, I think I asked for it every three months, quarterly, um, so that we don't forget what we uh, came up with in the plan, what we decided we were going to do, and I just want to make sure that we ever so often check and see where we are in terms of achieving um, the pro achieving progress uh, with our strategic plan. Uh, this is our plan for 2017 to 21. So we're already almost through two years of it. Yes. All right, go, go ahead. Uh, well, at your place, everybody got a copy of strategic plan update. Um, it's several pages long, so I'm not going to read you the entire thing. It's going to be extremely boring. You also have a copy just to remind you of what the strategic plan is. Um, I wrote a brief overview of what we decided, what our process was, and what the board has passed already. And then I wrote what I believe our biggest achievements of the past 18 months have been. I really feel proud of the fact that we uh, carried out a very smooth migration from one system to another, our patron and collections database. Um, I feel proud of the fact that we got a passport service up and running, which has generated revenue for the library and uh, is a great service for people in the community and outside. Um, and that we also carry through the changing of the name of the library to make its uh, role in a lot clearer that it is not just the Niles, for the village of Niles, but for that half of the population that's outside of Niles. So those are the things that I think that we are the big achievements, and then I go um, focus by focus, goal by goal, through the different things that we have been working on to try to get through this plan. And uh, it's a lot of detail, so I'm certainly not going to get through it here, but I did want to point out a couple of documents that I mentioned in it, just so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, I mentioned that we created a who answers what where document, which is designed to smooth out our service between different service points so that everybody has a common understanding of what the jobs are at the different service desks. It also helps the staff to understand what my expectations are for training for each desk. If somebody is going to be on the youth services desk, for example, the kids space desk, what they need to know to be on that desk so that that will help with cross training. So I'll just pass that around if you want to take a look at it. Oh, and it has a reverse look up at the back too, where if uh, somebody gets asked a question like, um, I need some service hours, who do I contact? Then the person at the desk will be able to look up and say, oh, well, if it's uh, court, of court ordered community service, they will contact Dave. But if it is just an adult who wants to donate their hours to the library, then they would be contacting Cindy. So it's to clarify those things. Do we have people we have a have a We do have a number of, of oh. court ordered people, um, not anybody with. What, what would you? How would you describe who you accept? Any, anything, uh, traffic, curfew, and things like that. Just uh, nuisance uh, more than anything. I think we do have once in a while. Do get a DUI once in a while from um, Cook County. Other than that, but no violence or anything like that. I would okay. and, and we get information as to what they're charged with. Yes, yes. Charged that's the first thing we get. So, okay. That's the first question we ask, what the offense is for. I see, I see. So, uh, yeah, this is interesting at the back. Yeah. Uh, I think this reverse lookup is probably helpful for your staff members who not, might not be familiar with what everyone right. does. Right. Well, and one of the qualifications for any of the desks is that you know what is done at all of the other desks so that you can direct people appropriately. Because if you recall, one of the problems people said they had is that our, we have a complicated building and people get lost in the building. We actually, somebody was just saying that people came out of the program on the lower level and they walked all the way up to the third level looking for the door. So apparently we still have some problems with navigating the building. But we are continuing to work on that. Um, and then another, in another section, the expanded community engagement section, where we are trying to gather information and explore options for expanded service in the northwest part of the district. Um, one of the documents I refer to is the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning's CMAP plan for the unincorporated area. And um, just you can see that it's a hefty document. Um, it is all available online. 
so, so you can read through it yourself. Yeah. Where is that available? Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, under CMAP. So you don't have you don't have it on your website. Isn't that a report they did for us? No, 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 no. It's a. Uh, they have been working on it for, it's how to develop the unincorporated areas of <coughs> Maine Township. So it's their plan for that. And and so can you put website that is it Maine Townships or Maine? It, it's it's um, Cook County's Department of Planning and oh. Development. Oh, oh, working yeah, with the right. Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning um, to try to build up their resources and find out what the community needs. And so is there a segment in that report that addresses the area you were talking about. I thought you mentioned this report to us a couple of I, times. Yeah, no, I have mentioned it. Yeah, most of so, the stuff in the strategic planning wrap-up so I have mentioned does this before. Does the CMAP is what you call it? The CMAP is the organization that created okay. the unincorporated Maine Township, Maine Northfield Unincorporated Area Plan. So that entire document is for the Maine Township Unincorporated Plan? Yeah. And it's available to us where? It's available on the, the website. They have their own website. I can send you guys the link if you would. Okay, yeah, I would here. like to see that. Yeah, sure. I know you talked about it um, yeah, before. It's, it's, uh, it's got a ton of information about what they have up there, what their needs are, what their, what their issues are. Um, I thought we were going to use their report to guide us we are. what we are going to do. Well, that's do. what I'm talking about. It's, it's part of the information gathering uh, for our strategic plan. I'm just saying this is one of the documents I'm referring to, just so you have a visual image of it and that you know that it's a thing that you can go look at, too. Um, in my report, I do say that I am planning on doing a presentation to the board next month that is going to be um, reviewing the demographics and the makeup of the unincorporated section of the district. Just so you have a little bit of a, of a visual idea and, a, and that more idea of numbers. And then the third document I just wanted to point, bring up to your attention is um, I mentioned in here that I wrote a collection development manual to guide the staff on their selection and their reading of the different collections. And so that's what this is. And it's, wow. yeah, it's, well, I could, consulted the selectors, and, and it was, of course, based on a previous version of it. I didn't mm -hmm. start with a blank page, to start writing. So what is a collection yeah. development? Well, how do you, how you build out your collection? It, well, for example, if I am hired by the library and I am assigned to purchase the adult DVDs, say, it will say, here are the places where you can get information about the up-and-coming adult DVDs. Here is uh, how often you should be expecting these things to go out. And uh, here's how often that you, that you, this is when you would get rid of things that are not going out. And so you would expect, say, I collect the easy reader section of the Youth Services Department. It's the only collection that I still do. And it's extremely high circulating. So anything in that collection that hasn't gone out in six months is weeded from the collection. So I, would, I wrote that down in here so that the next person to come along will have that as a standard. So it's got, um, but then somebody who's collecting history say, those things, you don't expect them to turn over quickly. But you still want to have a well-rounded collection where you're representing all different parts of history. So um, it just breaks down the collection bit by bit, and it just gives you an idea of how complex the library's collections really are. And I can pass that around to you if you'd like to see. Sure. Well, does it have a section in here on uh, patron request and how that figures into building out the collection? You know, I don't know that you get that many requests, we, but... We yeah. don't. It's mostly, um, well, I mean, when we do get a request, it's usually in the patron comments, and I, it all, is always referred to the selector to them, for them to think about. Um, but most of our patron requests come more in the form of they put holds on things that they haven't been able to get a hold of, and so we have reports for all of those things. And so that's another thing that I mentioned in the strategic wrap-up, is that we have uh, a much stronger ability to get a hold of reports we're looking at data for staff to be able to measure data of all kinds, particularly through the Polaris system. So that um, things that we used to have to send over to CCS, and there would be days, and um, and you might not get back exactly what you wanted. We now have the power to put together requests ourselves, and we get all kinds of rich data out of that. So staff have been learning how to do that. It, there was a little bit of a training curve on it, but um, but they've learned how to pull reports for themselves. So I just wanted to highlight three of the documents that are in here. I don't expect you all to read this word for word, but this does give you an idea of what we have been working on for the past 18 months. And then at the very end of it, I have 
um, what I believe the next steps are going to be, which is that we need another 18-month plan. And so I had originally intended to bring both this and the 18-month plan for this meeting, and there was no way I was going to do that. But we have started working on it, and I hope to have it for you for January. Okay. We, there are a number of things we haven't even started tackling yet. Yeah. So there are, as you said at the time, you said you thought it was an ambitious plan. I think it's a very ambitious plan. But I am still, I still feel good about it being on the right path and really um, we're moving in directions that are, are uh, I think, really improving the library and its service to take us. Sam, you look like you had a question. Uh, yeah, thank you, Susan. That's an extensive amount of work that you look right here. Thank you. Can we have a couple of minutes just to glance through Absolutely. this? I know yeah, I mean, yeah, that's because we haven't gotten anything on this side of the table yet. Would okay, it be oh, possible, down there? Would it be possible for you to put these online so we can view them? Um, no, I, I'm not PDF. interested in reading it online. I'd rather look at a paper. I, I, I think the collection yeah. development manual, for example, is so really detailed. People have to around. All right, and I'd like to take time yeah. to go through it. Is it possible to get a copy? I mean, this is part of our strategic plan. You mean this this thing? Right here. Oh, okay. Are you sending it around? I don't care. I, I mean, you can see it. I think it would be extremely boring to you. But no, I not at all. Me. Details don't for me. Then I have a question. Who answers what where? Yes. Um, is this a new document? Yes. Okay, can I get a copy of this? Because I thought you gave this one some time ago. Well, I've been working on it for a long time. Every time I give it back to the staff to make absolutely sure that but it's this correct. But this is, no, I'm, I'm that saying, is so this document. is up, more up to date. And there's no date on it, so I, I couldn't tell. But could I get a copy of this? Could you um, email this to me? Sure. I'd appreciate it. Then I can keep it with my strategic project planning information. I had one question. Um, I know I don't have my notes here, but I thought... Um, a major part of strategic plan was the signage throughout the library. Yeah. It, it is discussed in here. We have been working on it, but it's um, we have been working with a consultant who came in and is, is supposed to be giving us uh, some alternative alternatives for different ways to mark the different rooms. And he came up with some good ideas that were less expensive that we could implement ourselves to do some of the other things. So it's it's in progress, but I don't have anything specific to report on it right now. Oh, that's correct. I was as I was walking in from wherever we parked our cars tonight. I noticed there's like signage. I think it's the elevator. It's colorful, and 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 then I thought, oh wow, I wonder if this is like everywhere else. So that's what made me remember we were talking about it. And then as far as the consultant for signage, I know things change. Will whatever you decide, will you have the ability to update it without it being a? Yeah, we definitely want things to be flexible. Right? Okay. Because yeah, like this day and age, you keep you have to keep adapting. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. Well, that was my only question. Okay. All right. Um, I think that uh, concludes the discussion of the strategic plan for right now, and um, let's move on to the next item. Uh, last night, uh, excuse me, last month, uh, Trustee Jobelek made some suggestions about items that should be included in the director's report, and Trustee Spadoni suggested we put it on the agenda tonight, so it is on the agenda. And uh, so let's um, let's turn to that now. Uh, start out by uh, asking uh, Susan regarding what how she determines what goes into the report right now, and um, we can move on from there. Yeah. Um, well, the report has expanded quite a lot over the past few years, as you probably know. It used to, Linda used to try very hard to keep it very, very short. Sure. She thought the board wasn't interested in reading very much. Um, but since it's gotten so much easier to manipulate documents and add pictures, um, I have found the board has seemed to be very interested in hearing what is going on in the library. So um, each supervisor, uh, makes a report to their immediate supervisor and that all comes to me and I take everybody's reports and try to group all of the like things together. And so at this point I've, we've kind of achieved some standard categories of things to be reporting back on. Um, I try to be, uh, to give the board as much information as possible without boring you. I know that occasionally some of the detail that the supervisors give is probably more than you're interested in, but I always think it gives you a little glimpse into what their world is like. You know, you're, you may not have any idea of what it's like to be a cataloger, and so it gives you a little glimpse into the kinds of decisions that they are working on. Um, so if you ever want more information or less information, I am more than happy to do that. 
I have to say, I really like these photos that really sort of, you know, show all the people that attended and what people were doing. Um, makes it a little less dry. Yeah. Well, yes. to be honest with you, that's part that and what the residents say or the patrons say is probably my favorite part of the whole thing, reading the stories and what's going on. I don't write, uh, I think most library directors take that kind of information and they make it all neutral. They just say, this happened at the library and that happened at the library. And they, uh, But I have always thought that you like getting a glimpse into the different voices of the different supervisors and their different styles. And so I have not done that. I have not kind of stripped away the voices. I have tried to let their voices come through. Um, there's not usually a lot where I'm saying, I did this and I did that because my day-to-day -day job is not interesting. It's I, I basically meet with people. That's what I do. I meet with people and I review documents. And that is a great deal of my job. So that would make a very boring, boring report indeed. Okay. Would, 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 could you elaborate? You meet with people and review documents. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I don't understand what that represents. Well, I did talk about it at the beginning of my report this month. I tried to spell out some of the things that I do. But yeah, my most of my day is taken up with meeting with my my different levels of people and well, your staff staff right and then uh, got to do I occasionally get called in to talk with different patrons who have something to say um, I go out into meetings in the community I just I'm, I'm talking to people all the time which is a little bit of a strain since I am an introvert mm -hmm. so <laughs> I go home that's tired a lot of days but yeah that's a lot of my job and then um, and reviewing documents I have to sign off on every financial thing that goes through, and um, and I, you know, putting together all of the board information is a lot of what I do too. Yeah, I, I sort of like it broken down in terms of uh, the reports from individuals. It gives me an idea of what do these people do um, specifically, and you know, what are, are you organizing, and what events have come up, and um, the youth programs, for instance, Battle of Books. Um, programs it's all you know I think it's interesting I, I like reading about it um, and um, I don't know that there's anything else that I really uh, feel I need to see in here I do like getting the comments from the patrons that leave either compliments or criticisms or suggestions mm -hmm. um, and our and your response is on our behalf to them too because I want to make sure we do respond and I, I see what you do and I see you put down what the responses are um, so um, those are things that I do uh, appreciate seeing in here. Anyone else have any uh, comments? Well, I'm very pleased, and I look forward to reading this every month. I think it's wonderful. I didn't, I mean, to tell you the truth, I didn't realize that this much was offered through the library when I was working. Um, I would say keep it up, and I don't understand. I don't know what else. I would like included at this time, and if so, I will let you know. Okay. All right. and, um, and it, it also has a lot of diversity in it, which is very important for our community. So I think that that is really um, a lot to say for what you're doing at the library. So that I'd like to see. And I like that you put the numbers next to it, too. Not only do you have the pages with the numbers on it, but you also have that in the report. So you don't have to look back and think, oh, She's saying this about five people, or she's saying about eight, you know, eight. I mean, it's kind of nice. I like that. I like the little added that you put in there. So. I'm okay with it. Okay, so the reason I brought this up in the first place was mm -hmm. that I feel that the director's report has evolved into an overall library departmental report, which is certainly very interesting and I think it should be available to all the patrons. I suggested rather than it just be given to us, that it should be online as monthly highlights of our library. All of our department supervisors work really hard creating all of this information in time for it to be in our packet. And I would like to see it online. I thought I read somewhere or someone mentioned it already does exist. I've never found it online, though, on your website. So is that correct? Well, the board packet, sir. Does this, all, does this all, information, all board, I'm talking about the board packet. Does this well, this information, information exists, exactly. Does this, excuse me, I'm still talking. Does this information that highlights all of our departments on a monthly basis, is it anywhere on the website 
list it is. Monthly highlights of the library. So all of the photos that are in here that are incredible, that represent patrons or staff members interacting with, with either in, a, in teaching a class or whatever, that's what I'd like to see specifically on our website. Not hidden in a board packet like it's hidden here with us. I mean, I enjoy reading it, but I think it's something we should extract and make available. The reason I'd like to see it separated from your so-called director's report is that there's other information that you provide us that tends to get lost. Um, I remember Trustee Martin requested some information, and I, and I know it was financial. I can't remember specifically what it was. And instead of it being an agenda item where we could all receive that information and discuss it if we have questions, it was hidden in the director's report. And then months later, something comes up, and we don't have the documentation in our finances. It's hidden in the director's report, along with all the other highlights of our library. And I think what are you talking, talking about? I don't oh, know. Well, I'll be this glad to, in, to specify. Just give me a second. What you're saying. Mm. I don't think it makes sense. Or it's hides anything. It's right here. It's on the website. Okay, the excuse board. me. A couple of years ago, I asked Susan Lemke if she could provide. Yeah, because this came up with uh, a couple meetings ago. I asked Susan if she could request quotes from um, different um, printing companies regarding Chapter One. And it took some time, and I believe she had Sasha work on that. So when we were discussing Chapter 1 and how costly it is and, and the publication process, Sasha mentioned that Susan Lemke did write in her director's report that some quotes were obtained, and she mentioned whatever in a few sentences. Now, my request for quotes from a vendor certainly weren't to get Susan's uh, <coughs> synopsis in three sentences. I expected to see those quotes, review them, and discuss them because it was regarding the printing of, ch printing of chapter one. So that didn't take place, but it's a perfect example of how important information doesn't reach us, but a synopsis is included in this lengthy departmental highlights. So that shouldn't be in there. And then more recently, I think Susan mentioned she um, had some figures in there and I'm sorry, but I can't uh, remember specifically what it was, but it's just another example of crucial information that should reach us for discussion, not just added to, you know, we, we had a, uh, a craft in our children's department and they made Christmas cards. That's completely different. I'm just saying we need to start separating the information, not hiding this valuable information, but also not putting information in her director's report that should be elsewhere or more readily available for discussion. That's my point. Uh, well, I, I think everything that's in here should be in here. I don't really want to take anything out of it. Um, I don't think anything's hidden in there. I mean, the report isn't that long that you can't really go through it. It's usually about between five and ten pages at most. Well, there's a difference so, between a paragraph in there or an agenda yeah. item that we can discuss. <clears throat> right. Well, we did discuss um, chapter one. I remember having. No, we did not discuss I, the three quotes. We, we did discuss it. Sasha was here. He gave no, us quite we a did not. No, you're missing the point. I, I do recall this, and we talked about it, and went over the cost, and no, we talked the, about it. That's and not the point. We can actually right. go around and say sure. there was a whole presentation on chapter one with the marketing and the quotes. Right. And there was a whole PowerPoint that we devoted to the market. There was no information so, regarding I'm just, I'm just talking well, I'm just right now. Please. Well, you're making it's a okay. false statement. I'm not making a false statement. Let her talk. I'm not making a false statement. Excuse me. I am, and I saw it with my own eyes. I was sitting at this table. Mm -hmm. And we all discussed and said, now we want Chapter 1 to be with this price, with these quotes, and we wanted an extra. Is it one or two Chapter 1s per year? Two. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm done now. Thank you very much. But that wasn't my right. point. My point was that instead of receiving the three quotes that I requested, Susan wrote two or right. three sentences. Okay. Yeah. That's so, what's taking away from our ability to review information at the time when we should have reviewed it. All right. Does anyone have a motion they want to make? I have just another yes. clarification. Yes. But why is this a so-called director's report? 
Pardon me? Why is this a so-called director's report? I have no idea. She calls it a director's report. You said it was a so-called director's report. Why is it a so-called? I, I don't understand that. I don't think anything was meant by it. Are you trying to... Well, it sounds um, rather pejorative. I, I'm just wondering why you called it a so-called. Well, because it, it's, it encompasses so many different types of information, and I would like to see a director's report specifically regarding Susan's position. I mean, she's our director, rather than include all the different departments and all that they do. I'd like to see that extracted, and specifically on our website, as highlights for the library, as opposed to director's report. All right, does anyone have a specific, oh, I'm sorry, Patty, you My say something? My statement on this is, isn't Susan in charge of the whole library? So therefore, isn't she in charge of all of these departments? Yes. So therefore, this is under Susan. Yes, yes, yes. I don't see where this isn't under Susan. Well, she it, might not be personally running an event, but she's the one who they have to come to for approval for everything. So I don't see what you're talking about as a, as a problem. No, I'm just interested in more of her executive level Responsibilities. Okay. All right. Does anyone have a specific motion? And if not, we'll move on. All right. Um, is there any unfinished business here? I don't. I don't think there's any unfinished business. I don't see anything. Um, so, all right. Uh, now I need a motion to move into executive session. For motion. The Discussion of the session minutes and to discuss the purchase and release of the property to reach the public body. Do I have a motion? Motion. And she says the second. All right, then please take the roll. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. 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 So we will go on to executive session now, which is closed. Uh, then we'll come out of executive session, and you're welcome to come back in at that time. Okay, great. Thank you. I guess so. Okay, that's. I'm not sure. I don't think the one that I have. The way you're talking about it, you're good. Trust me. So we are uh, back in open session now, and therefore I. I'd like to ask if someone would like a motion to, with respect to the closed session minutes of January 30th, 2014, to redact those minutes as indicated to our director and release those minutes, with respect to the May 20th, 2015 minutes, to redact and release those minutes. With respect to the June 17, 2015 minutes, to keep those confidential. With respect to the March 16, 2016 minutes, to redact and release those minutes. With respect to the June 20, 2018 minutes, to approve and release those minutes. With respect to the October 17, 2018 minutes, to approve and retain as confidential those minutes. And finally, with respect to the November 14, 2018 minutes, to approve and retain as confidential those minutes. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Second. Okay. Um, I don't believe there'd be any discussion, but uh, if there is, stay so. Otherwise, we have a roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Andy? Yes. Diane? Yes. 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 Okay, thank you very much. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion? Yes. Second. Okay. Okay. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. 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 Y